Greetings, star family of the Earth Angels. Here we go. Many of you had a powerful 22-22 day yesterday. This energy is going to keep flowing all through this month, all through this year, and into eternity as we are navigating through this unknown, through the Nawal, bridging the two worlds, the physical and the non-physical. We've had several days three days in a row of very calm on the Schumann resonance. If you look at the Schumann chart, there's just a couple little banding, but the hertz have been from 7 to 16 hertz at the most, but it's very calm. So this calming energy, the calm before the storm, and there's many levels to the storm. There's different power grades to all storms. So it's kind of like what people are seeing as the event, the event energies. And I want to address a couple things today and talk about some of these energies coming in with these transmissions today. So there was a good question asked in one of the comments about the meditation, the goddess meditation that I posted a couple days ago about part of it was spinning clockwise. And someone asks, why is the spinning clockwise when the feminine vortex spins counterclockwise? That it's confusing and contradictory. So this is a concept that comes up a lot. So thank you for the question. And I don't have time to respond to comments. For one, I'm not a typist. And it takes it's very time consuming to type out for myself and um, I'm very busy working and doing these transmissions and teaching and that, um, but I do appreciate all the comments and it's, that it helps other light workers and people that are new to the channel to see that many people are going through the same things and to it, I can maybe address when I see uh, many people with the same question. So this does come up a lot. Um, I've been teaching for many years that, um, this, when things seem confusing or may seem contradictory because of the duality nature of the universe and this realm of la matrica that sometimes things seem contradictory and they may be at times because part of this transition the transmutation is to release all dogma to release all paradigms all constructs and not get trapped in any paradigm or any dogmas that may lead us away from truth. Now all paths do lead to the same source. So we, we say there's different paths, say like the Buddhist path, the Taoist path, the Hindu. I've trained with many masters over the years for over 30 years. And I teach a Taoist art. I'm a lineage holder of a, a Taoist ancient divine alchemy called Kunlun from Kunlun Mountain. Now the Asians name many of their arts, especially a Chinese, after the mountains. The mountains are one of the most sacred consciousness in this realm. So many of the arts like Mao Shan, Wu Dan, Kun Lun are named after the mountains in China. So I don't even call myself a Taoist. I don't call myself anything. I, I learn from everything and I teach from my heart what resonates with myself. So one of the Zen masters I trained with about 30 years ago in the temple, his name was Sensei Ogoi, Koshin Ogoi, Sensei in Japanese teacher, like Sifu in Chinese. And Sensei would say, nothing is as it seems, nor is it otherwise. Meaning it's not this and it's not that. So we don't get caught up in the minutia and the dogma and the, the contradictory teachings because it's all symbolic anyways just like whoever came up with the right hemisphere of the brain being feminine and the left being masculine it's, it's symbolic because they do it with tests and different concepts coming up you know the creative side is the right brain and the you know non-linear and then the more scholarly logical uh, linear is the the left hemisphere so we equate the left, but who's to say really? I mean, these are sim symbolic. So when we say the feminine vortex is counterclockwise, or you know, some lineages or some teachings might say the feminine is clockwise, 
it depends on what lineage you're in. So sometimes these things may seem contradictory and we think, well, if this is right, then that's got to be wrong or that's wrong. That's why I don't label myself as anything because if someone, if I walk around, I'm Taoist, then that makes me not Buddhist or not Christian or not. I'm everything and nothing. I take something from everything. and But eventually you pick a path and you go all the way with it. And that doesn't mean you negate everything else or you put down other arts, you know, because these are all spiritual arts. There's many different kinds of arts. You know, there's the martial arts, the spiritual arts, there's fine arts like painting. You can turn anything into an art, like musical art, or or your whole life becomes an art. It's a symphony, it's sound, it's music. You know, so we release all these these dogmas and concepts. So whatever feels right with you, like the genius Buckminster Fuller would say, live life like an experiment, because this experience is an experiment. Consciousness is experimenting. So when we get caught up and get serious, that's why our Sifu says, don't be serious, too serious about anything. I mean, we take our practice serious, we seriously do it, but we do it in a freedom. We don't get caught up in the dogma and the minutia and the the concepts, because all these practices, when we say spiritual, be, meaning non-physical, or that which is metaphysical beyond the physical, into the super consciousness, the, the metaphysical beyond the physics, beyond the physical, that none of this stuff really matters anyways. So whatever feels right for you, you know, if you do the practice and spinning clockwise doesn't feel right or feels off, experiment, try spinning counterclockwise. These are just guides. They're not set in stone. Nothing is set in stone. And with everything, I was listening to a talk from Terrence McKenna talking about everything is a double-edged sword. So what is up sometimes seems down and what is down sometimes seems up. Uh, there was a Zen master that he used to stand on his head every day and his students would say, you know, master, why... Why are you always standing on your head? And he would say, because it's an upside down world. I want to see it from the right way, which was him not taking things too seriously. But also it, there's multiple reasons for this. And, and part of it is part of the act, part of our story, part of this play. The Zen master, when they awake and realize that this is all just a story, it's temporary. It's real to our consciousness. We make it real with our perception and our awareness. But it's temporary, it's changes, so that means that it disappears, which real is eternal, and it never changes. So we're working with that unchangeable, eternal self to navigate through these changing times, this shift, this, this awakening from this drama, this dharma, this sleep. Uh, now the dharma is Sanskrit for universal truth, so... If, for instance, uh, one Sifu, Taoist master, shaman that I uh, train with and been initiated into his lineage that I teach, he told us a story about um, there's a practice called circumambulation, where the devotion, it's a devotional Hindu and Buddhist practice, which they walk clockwise around what's called a stupa in the this, this Sanskrit meaning heap. You see this. The stupas are in the Buddhist, the Hindu. Uh, they were like burial grounds. There's either either a master, a teacher was buried, or some kind of um, sacred, a religious object, a sacred object. And the the teacher, the master, would have the students walking clockwise around the stupa throughout the day, putting their energy into this sacred mound. And it's in many different forms. If you look up stupa, S-T-U-P-A, you'll see many different kinds of stupas made out of stone, made out of rock, made out of um, different maybe metal objects. It could be a symbol of Buddha, whatnot. So they would, he would have the students and walking clockwise, and that's general practice. And then at night, the student, one student caught the master. He was walking around it counterclockwise. He'd say, hey, wait a minute. Why are you making us walk, having us walk clockwise and you're going counterclockwise? That's contradictory. You're breaking the practice. And he was half-jokingly said, you, 
you know, the students, they put their energy into the stupa at night. I mean, during the day and then the, at night I come and I accumulate the chi, the energy that was put into it during the day. And someone might say, oh, that's wrong or that's evil. He's still in the energy. It's the human mind lives in this prison of duality. And duality is really a concept that was created by the mind, by the unborn mind to experience what it felt like to experience these different feelings, emotions, this separation, simulation. So the mind gets caught up in right and wrong, good and bad good and evil. And like Walter Russell, Dr. Russell would teach that evil exists only in the mind of man. And we can go on for hours about these concepts. I was trying to get to the point, but the mind wants to debate the human mind. Sometimes it wants to debate just to be right. And this isn't about being right or wrong. This is about resolving all things. This is about transcending, transmuting. So part of the teaching is to assist, to guide the human awareness to navigate beyond what things seem, but beyond the known, and to release this feeling of being confused or things contradicting each other, because I see that concept come up a lot, and say, just don't get caught up in the dogma. One teacher might teach it this way, another might teach it that way. It doesn't mean this way is right and that way is wrong. When, when we get caught up in knowing that this is the right way or that's the wrong way. That's when we get caught up in the story, when when we take ourselves too seriously. So obviously there's a way to begin practices and to navigate, but there's also experimentation and there's refinements and, and many things that go into experiencing this matrix, this realm from many different angles. So we try not to get caught up as best as we can in the dogma and the teachings and the practices. And we use them as guides and, and then we experiment with them. Because some days you might want to navigate clockwise, some counterclockwise. There's not a right and a wrong. But obviously if you're following a certain system, practice, spiritual art, then that teacher, whoever's teaching it, has a reason for the way that they're having you do it. And until you free yourself fully from the simulation, then you follow that practice until it evolves into something else. And the best we can do is to put our heart and soul into whatever it is, whatever art we're practicing, doesn't matter what it is. As long as that practice is not harming anyone, doesn't bring harm to living beings, to consciousness, to life itself. And that's why we call the creator the God source, the great mystery in our lineage, because it is beyond the known. It is beyond what can be understood by the mind of man. That's why we call it the unborn mind of Buddha. It's the unknowable mind, the indestructible mind of source, Buddha, God, the Tao, whatever name we want to give it. So ultimately, we're transcending all concepts, releasing all dogma, all concepts, all constructs, to fully free ourselves and break through the veil, what people are calling the compression breakthrough. So thank you for the question, and I do my best to address these uh, questions or issues people may be having. So just experiment. That's what we're doing anyways. And you can follow any practice. doesn't matter what Buddhist, Hindu, Christian and then experiment with it. You know, if, if your higher self is saying, do it this way, try it and see what comes out of it. There's no harm, no harm, no foul, that old saying. Now, if it doesn't resonate with you, then go back to the practice or, or refine it, navigate to a different practice until ultimately you're going to find that which resonates with the deepest part of yourself and then just go all the way, go all the way with that practice. Uh, Zen master... Uh, Ogoi, Sensei Ogoi would say, go through and through and through until you totally break through. And then we release, we let go of all things as we merge with that infinite consciousness, our eternal bliss consciousness, which is the new earth emanation or manifestation. 
So we'll start our first transmission today from Patricia Cota Robles from eraofpeace.org. A gift from on high in the brand new flame of transfiguration. I am transcribing this newsletter on February 2nd, 2020, which numerically is a mirror image number 0202-2020. Now this was uh, posted yesterday, so but with these 2222 energies coming in through the whole month, we'll be addressing this energy throughout the month. So it is a mirror image as well as a palindrome number 0202-2020, which is the same backwards and forwards. This rare numerical phenomenon will not occur again until December 12th, 2121, equal 1212-2121, then not for another 909 years on March 3rd, 3030, 0303-3030. The particular cosmic vibrational frequency that is bathing the earth today is extremely rare and is empowering the I am presence of every person on this planet with the full divine momentum and creative love nature of the divine feminine. In response to our heartfelt pleas, our Father, Mother, God, and the company of heaven have agreed to encode into the words of this newsletter the full divine potential of these cosmic vibrations. The divine intent of this gift from on high is to give every person's I am presence permission to utilize these cosmic vibrations in their personal life in ways that will perpetuate their awakening and the fulfillment of their divine plan during this new decade. Dear one, know that your I am presence has accepted this precious gift and is now standing in readiness awaiting your direction. This is true no matter when you are reading or listening to this, please do not let this opportunity pass you by. Focus on exactly what you personally want to manifest for yourself, your loved ones, humanity, and Mother Earth during this new decade. Then set your intention and ask your I Am Presence to take command of your vision. This will occur in perfect alignment with your divine plan and your highest good. Now please focus the full power of your attention on what the company of heaven is revealing to us about this cosmic moment in our ascension process. Go within, and the flame of God's illumined truth pulsating in your heart will help you comprehend the magnitude of what we are being called to do in 2020. We have entered a new decade, and we have been assured by our Father, Mother, God, and the company of heaven that during the next 10 years, humanity will change the course of history for Mother Earth and all her life. The information flowing forth from the realm of illumined truth is revealing that during this decade, 2020 to 2030, humanity will develop our latent abilities through which we will literally transfigure our earthly bodies and our outer world life experiences into the heart-based patterns of perfection associated with the fifth dimensional new earth. The seemingly miraculous transfiguration will be accomplished through a greatly expanded collaboration between the company of heaven and an awakened humanity. Our Father Mother God said this degree of collaboration between heaven and earth has never before been attempted. With the God-victorious success of the miraculous events that birthed this new decade, the final phase of the eclipse series which was brought to fruition with a full moon lunar eclipse the weekend of January 10th through 12th, 2020, we crossed the threshold of what the company of heaven referred to as the 13th gateway. Our Father Mother God said the victory of this facet of Earth's divine plan paved the way for brand new frequencies of the violet flame to be anchored through humanity's heart flames. The violet flame is the sacred fire associated with the seventh solar aspect of deity. This fifth dimensional crystalline solar light will be the predominant frequency of the twelve solar aspects of deity that will bathe the earth during the age of Aquarius, which we have now entered, the largest portal through which the violet flame from the core of creation enters the atmosphere of earth includes Florida, Cuba, Santo Domingo, and all of the Caribbean islands. It is not by chance that we were guided to have our first free seminar of the new decade in Orlando, Florida on January 12th. 
The new aspect of the violet flame is known through all creation as the violent flame, the violet flame of transfiguration. During the seminar in Orlando, the lightworkers gathered their unified heart flames and formed a mighty transformer through which the highest frequencies of fifth dimensional crystalline solar light that humanity and Mother Earth have ever received was anchored into the physical plane of Earth and is now readily available for everyone who has the heart call to utilize it. The most critical time for initiating the direction and the momentum of a new decade is at its inception. In this case we are talking about 2020. This critical facet of the divine plan will not just randomly happen. The direction and the momentum for this new decade will only be successfully co-created with the assistance of you and me and the rest of embodied lightworkers on earth. We were told by our father, Ma father, mother, God that this new aspect of the violet flame will empower humanity to transfigure our earthly bodies and the bodies of Mother Earth and all her life into the crystalline perfection of the new earth during this new decade. The beings of light have revealed that divine timing has brought us to this critical point during which the incoming power of God's violet flame of transfiguration will build to an intensity beyond anything humanity has ever experienced. In 2020, step by step and month by month, we will be guided through this unprecedented process of transfiguration as each facet of this divine plan is revealed to us by our Father Mother God. We at Air of Peace will share that information with you through our weekly vlogs, free seminars, and monthly newsletters. You can join and sign up for these events and newsletters at eraofpeace.org. And one more thing about the divine feminine energies. The I forgot to mention in the beginning, there's a lot of energy coming through, and I was jumping into multiple timelines that, as I put this transmission, I know this is going to go a little long today, but with these energies coming in, there are things I wanted to address and clarify. So the lineage that I teach is called a water path. And, you know, the mind of man created the concept of fire being yang and water being yin, yang being the masculine, yin being the feminine. But within the yin-yang symbol, you see the black within the white and the white within the black. And the concept from Guan Yin or Avelokitesvara in the Heart Sutra saying emptiness is form and form is emptiness. So we could look at this as the positive is the negative and the negative is the positive or the physical is the non-physical. The non-physical is the physical because they are tied together. They are united that one cannot exist without the other. You cannot have black without white and white without black or form without emptiness, emptiness without form. You cannot have one without the many and the many without the one. And this is something that many may take a lifetime to understand that concept. But for instance, negative doesn't always mean bad. The, the mind of man may think when they hear something is being negative, that it always means bad or something positive always means good, but sometimes negative. So beyond the good and bad, we think of malevolent and bene benevolent or that which serves or what the, that the, which does not serve humanity. So sometimes the negative could be in service to humanity, such as negative ions. They are good for the body. They, they help neutralize free radicals. And sometimes the positive, like the positive ions, the positive molecules in the body, can attack the host if they're not neutralized by what we would call negative. So we're transcending this concept of picking and choosing and good versus bad, bad versus good, because of these concepts that we conjured up with our consciousness. We have created a miscreation, and we as a consciousness through our perception conjure up things that we may call evil and then put that responsibility onto something external. And that is why the masters say we take full 100% responsibility for our creation, for what we experience in this realm, because until you do, it's kind of like a leaf blowing in the wind. We become the navigator, the, the captain of our ship, instead of being forced into 
situations and energies that may not resonate with us. And that is part of, of this process of awakening to realize that we being meaning our higher self or our true self created this realm, this this simulation to experience ourself or what we call self or separate self or individuality or individual self. The Hindu would say that Brahma fell asleep, meaning God, source, fell asleep into its creation, which is that amnesia, what people see as the amnesia programming, fell asleep into this realm all for the joy of the experience of waking up. Or like Alan Watts would say, we are God playing hide-go-seek with itself, meaning we hid within this vessel, within the simulation, forgetting that we were or are and always are and will be here in the now and the eternal now one with source you cannot separate from that which we truly are our true self so we get caught up in the duality universe and caught up in these concepts of good versus evil right versus wrong now the mind of man the human mind may go into what might be considered the negative polarity or think of, well, what about those that harm children? What about, you know, these human trafficking, these people that torture other humans? And I'm not talking about those things, like the physical aspect. I'm talking, of, these are all about the conceptual, conceptualization, the our perception, our awareness. So we're releasing that part of the story that created that miscreation where a human could even hurt or harm itself or another human, which appears to be a separate being, through this belief in separation or this belief in good versus evil, light versus dark. Because sometimes we need the dark energy, which to sleep at night, and then we need the light. You know, it's the balance of night and day. And it doesn't, night doesn't mean bad, day doesn't mean good. The human vessel needs both. Just like sometimes we need to rest and sometimes we need to take action. So these are all part of our awareness, our consciousness. So when we talk about these spiritual things, it's more about our awareness, our true awareness, and our perception and our consciousness. So that's what we are resolving with these practices, these spiritual arts, we're resolving. Zen Master Benkai would say all things are perfectly resolved in the unborn mind of Buddha. So we're taking that unborn pure awareness and bringing it, we're bridging it through this vessel, through our awareness, through our consciousness, through this avatar to manifest our full power, our infinite light and our infinite life through that zero point energy and our heart center. And we do that by releasing all beliefs, all dogma, all concepts, just for a moment. You know, just take a moment beyond the fear or beyond the conflict, the internal conflict that might be in the mind. And that's from the miscreation of identifying with the concepts or identifying with the masks, our story that we wear, that we live out, that we're playing. This is a play. Some people see it like a game. You know, it's a game of consciousness. Let me experience what it feels like to be in suffering, to feel pain, to feel separation, to feel alone. Consciousness wanted this experience, but now we're releasing all those things. We're letting all these things go through this ascension process. And we're doing it as a collective now. We have our individual ascension, our individual awakening, and now we are still working on our individual awareness, but together as a collective, we're assisting all of humanity through this great awakening and through this ascension process. So the next transmission from Maureen Moss, beloved hearts, from my heart, I wanted to send forth to you the love and blessings of both the angelic realm and the Syrian royal lions that I received this morning during a beautiful ceremony for this 20220. The earth was blessed deeply. The energies coming forth from the stars and the Aquarian stargate were filled with love 
new ascended life codes and beautiful frequency waves of blue and white poured forth and around us and still are may each surround you now and expand your hearts may your day and your week be blessed and your heart filled with love as you go forth spreading love radiating your light and offering the many blessings bestowed upon you to all you meet and all you sense may need them including gaia one love one heart one humanity love maureen and from judith cusell the goddess is the one who has always been in charge of all the energy centers of the earth within and without hers are the pyramids and the pyramid energies and those crystal pyramid temples which now are rising she is that which brings the higher consciousness to rise again and is transforming humanity she holds the keys and the codes within our souls and she activates them from deep within she is the one who brings in the cleansing and purification of mankind so that mankind itself can be reborn there is no greater force at play currently as the goddess and she is now truly transforming us and bringing us back the truth of all being her symbol is the rose the rose has many petals each petal then opens up a higher state of consciousness and love of compassion and grace therefore those who receive the rose in inner initiation then become part of the great sisterhood of the rose who work with the transformation of mankind in all its phases this is an excerpt from goddess energy course from judith com and today from the gene keys unlocking the higher purpose hidden in your dna by richard rudd february 3rd through february 7th 2020 gene key 13 and that is associated with the goddess energies the number 13 and listening through love the great challenge is to listen to open our eyes minds and hearts and read the secrets that are written all around us and inside us when we listen from our heart our soul then we begin to see hope in everything around us in listening to a higher frequency we first of all have to resonate at that frequency our whole body has to vibrate at a higher frequency and then we feel more of the truth we feel through our body our organs particularly through our belly and we begin to feel the higher purpose within things the more we listen in this way holding someone's higher purpose always foremost the more will emanate that through our listening and the more others will feel that trust emanating from us true deep heart listening brings all human beings into sympathy this is an excerpt from the 64 ways magical and this is th from the magical hologenetic gene keys geometry the cd empathy 13 is the beauty one of rapture 30 the gift discernment 13 is fresh one light 30 the shadow discord 13 is the entropy one of desire 30 this week gene keys 13 1 and 30 interwoven the gene key 13 is empathy discernment and discord aquarius the fixed air to be empathic is to have access to the egg out of which all the great myths have sprung empathy alone goes further and deeper than myth because it reunites the opposites and brings an end to the stories themselves empathy is a state of consciousness outside of time even though it enfolds time again this is symbolized by the mystery of the number 13 which stands for the hub of the great wheel of 12 the mystic number of the grail at the center of the round table or the christ encircled by his 12 disciples it is the number of the arachne the spider the mystical thirteenth sign of the zodiac she sits at the heart of the web of creation and through her legs she remains in constant empathy with all that is and from the yi ching fellowship of man fire rises up to heaven the longing for union fuels creativity purifying the past to discern the present empathy is the beauty of rapture discernment is fresh light discord is the entropy of desire creating passion distinguishing things according to their kinds and classes it will be advantageous to cross the great stream it will be advantageous to maintain the firm correctness of the superior man and from the zodiac 
Aquarius, revolutionary change agent for community, fixed air. Aquarius is the energized air of the ethers that calls our consciousness to the concept or to the cosmos. Cerebral, contemplative, awake, service to self-growth through expansion of consciousness. And this is from genekeys-society.com. And today from the Zolkin Times, Kin 206, White Spectral World Bridger. Spectral is the name for the number 11, and its keywords are liberate, release, and dissolve. The 11th day of a wave spell is all about letting it all go. Don't think or worry about the mission you began. Take a day off and feel liberated. Today is White World Bridger, which represents death, opportunity, and equality. The World Bridger is always offering us a chance to cross a bridge. As Bob Dylan said, you give something up for everything you gain. Pay for your ticket and don't complain. This sums up the rules of the game. Every bridge you cross, every level you go up comes with a price. You must let something go. Liberate yourself today by giving up something that will free you to cross a bridge. May the bridge you cross be a happier place. And this is also something that Sifu transmitted to us. His apprentices, he is a Mongolian shaman, and he would teach us that all magic comes with a price. And some people may look at this as a negative way, but to be more congruent, we'll say with every action, there is an exchange of energy. And you could think of it, we think of sacrifice maybe as a bad thing, but sometimes sacrifice meaning giving up something to gain another. Sometimes we sacrifice for instance, to practice an art or to practice our great works, we might be sacrificing time. It takes time to practice whatever it is we're practicing. So sometimes we let go to gain. We let go of something that no longer resonates. And that's why many light workers, you'll hear them saying that if this doesn't resonate, with you just move on to something else because as all of us know especially on this ascension process that we don't have time to debate time is of the essence we're at the tipping point doesn't mean that we're in a hurry like the, in the Tao Te Ching nature accomplishes everything but is never in a hurry but knowing that because of time limitations the limitation is there's 24 hours in a day and our time is being taken up uh, those that are coming forward, stepping forward, stepping up, rising up. Our time is very valuable. There's a saying in Zen Buddhism, inch time foot gem, inch time each moment, 77 coming through, inch time foot gem each moment, inch time foot gem is worth more. So each moment is worth more than a priceless gem. And once we realize that, we realize the value of each moment that we have to experience our greatest potential, our highest light, our highest love, our highest codes. So though, then we do not waste time. And because time is of the essence and being at this critical edge, this critical mass, this tipping point, we may call it, we know that these debates and this right versus wrong and us versus them, we don't have time for that separation programming or for this this is right and this is wrong or, or these concepts of something or someone being better or greater than or less than something else. We're navigating through that zero point, which is equality. It is equal. So we're dropping all the nonsense of right versus wrong, us versus them, so that we can live fully from the middle, from the middle Dantian, from the middle path, path with heart, the highest path, the highest love today from Christina Papa Giorgio. And I know some of this is more fiery energies, but these with these activations coming in, the fires are burning bright. The light, we're shining our light brightly into the night. So it might be coming through in today's uh, transmission. So bear with me here, beloved beings of light. Some people enjoy me going on these tangents. Some may get annoyed, so... Like we say, if it doesn't resonate, move on. If it resonates with you, thank you. Today from Christina Papa Giorgio, White Spectral World Bridger. 
Kin 206, 3 February 2020, 3 2 2 0 2 0 equal 3 2 4 equal 9, 3 Holy Trinity, Joy, Creativity, 9 Destiny, Service, Compassion, Humanity, Grace. Kin 206 equals 8 Abundance, Infinity, Flow, In Breath, Out Breath. A very powerful liberation code today, releasing the old paradigm and entering the new world. Day 11 in the Yellow Warrior Wave Spell of fearlessly questioning everything in his path with a profound intelligence, disabling the old paradigm and fully focused on forging a new path to a brave new world. Yesterday through the 2222 Gateway, we fully anchored the foundation of our peaceful new world. Today, the fearless warrior is fully liberating us from the old world in order to release new opportunities, leading us over the rainbow bridge to a wondrous new world and new life. Tone of creation, spectral is the 11th tone of creation. It operates in the emotional realm and its actions are that of dissolving, releasing, and liberating. So today is all about emotional release. Allow that energy in motion to be expressed and dissolved. Allow the tears, the laughter, the joy to be expressed, no holding back. Connect with your higher wisdom, giving you the intelligence to carve a new path of liberation. This is a very powerful opportunity to release core wounding of old ancient ancestral patterns and cycles, choosing to release and liberate all that no longer serves our well-being. These are very powerful energies at work to create final closure, dissolving all impediments to you finally claiming and manifesting your dream life. Tony Levin symbolizes a gateway and polarity, inviting you to step through into a new, more divine reality filled with abundant opportunities. The master builders are moving into their new houses and sacred temples. Certificate of occupancy status obtained. So precious hearts, today the emotional body will reveal all that is needed to be surrendered in order for the new energies to anchor, detach from all emotional drama and any fears that arise, cancel, clear, delete, and dissolve all of those. Choose to focus on the new and put down very strong roots anchoring these liberating energies into a solid foundation for your new life. We are doing it, Starseeds. Terra Nova beckons us to join her in paradise. Today's question is what do I need to surrender and dissolve in order to liberate my new life? Divine blessings for disillusion of the old paradigm. Yonder forth your beautiful new white life and potentially wife awaits. <laughs> oh, yes. Kin 206, White Spectral World Bridger. The mantra, the code for today is, I dissolve in order to equalize. Releasing opportunity, I seal the store of death. With the spectral tone of liberation, I am guided by the power of my own power doubled. And really feel into these mantras, these words, these codes. They are activations to assist as another tool of awakening. And we have many, many tools at our disposal. We practice non-attachment. We don't get attached to any concepts or belief systems or dogmas. And that's what this transition is all about. We stay out of the fear. We release the fears by releasing the prisons of dogma and belief systems. And that's what part of this transmission was today. So to continue from the last timeline I jumped off of, the path that I currently teach, I've taught many spiritual arts, I've trained with many masters over the, for over 30 years in temple, monasteries, Zen masters, Buddhist masters, the uh, Hindu masters, uh, the Taoist, the Tao from China, Taoist masters and Christian and uh, you name it. To experience all different realms and for over 13 years, about 13 years, I've, I don't even know time anymore that trained in the Taoist arts and Qi Gongs, Nei Gong, Shen Gong, the, the path, the main path that I teach is called Kunlun, K-U-N-L-U-N, from Kunlun Mountain, one of the most sacred mountains in China. 
that um, we call it the water path for the divine feminine. And I've trained in fire paths, but we're balancing the fires with the waters. And we call it the downward flow. But sometimes the water flows down. Sometimes it rises up. You know, it takes on both. And how does it rise? Sometimes it rises by evaporation. Sometimes it rises by filling a vessel. And the fires, we say the fire path is the upward, you know, it's the swimming against the current. It's the kundalini rising up the spine. And why is that? Because generally we see fires rising, say, up off of the wood, off of the ground, off of the earth, rising up. But sometimes the the fire may flow down. It might through, how might this, may it do this? Following a path, following through a funnel, per, perhaps fire can get pulled down through a channel, but we don't we don't want to make things too complex. That's part of why we choose certain symbolisms to simplify to make things simple. So we say the black is the feminine, the white the masculine. But it really came from the mountain, the sun shining. One side was illuminated, the one other side was in shadow. So the Taoist master saw that the light made. When it illuminates one side, it makes the other side dark. Not meaning that the, the lit up side of the mountain's good and the dark side of the mountain's bad. So we use, we get caught up in these because a lot of times when we say like the malevolent beings, we say the dark ones or, you know, those of the light are the, the benevolent ones. But that's just part of this simulation. It's part of this duality experience that we're in so the mind will try to pick a side us versus them them you know black versus white you know the these things the religion against another religion the politics it's it's all divide and conquer kind of concepts and we're resolving all that now by realizing that we our consciousness created the divisions all divisions and we resolve it by uniting that's what the unity consciousness is we are all one and the fear comes up when people say, well, you know, that, that one world religion kind of concept, oh, that's of the Illuminati or the new world order kind of thing. So you hear new world, the fear might come up, but the, 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 the malevolent beings take it, you know, that which is, we can say, an assistance to humanity and turn it against, you know, it's, again, that's against the tide. So, in, in the water path, we say you go with the flow, with the current. Regardless if you go with the flow or swim against the current upstream, it takes much greater effort to swim against the current. It's like riding your bicycle. You know, riding up the hill takes way more effort than gliding downhill. We don't get caught up in the concepts, but we use it as symbolism. So going with the flow, the current of the river, the stream, you know, merrily down the stream, meaning the downward flow going, returning to the ocean of consciousness. All paths lead to the same source, but we say we cultivate and store chi and utilize this energy for our highest potential. So that's why these concepts of going with the flow are becoming more popular because it takes much less energy. It's a simple path. You know, we simply flow with the current of energy. So today, on February 3rd, we had another beautiful day here in Ohio, another spring-like day at, in the mid-50s. I was able to get a break today and go for an hour hike through a sacred marsh. When Gaia calls, I answer. So as I went through this hike, the, the birds were singing in their beautiful tones of joy and bliss. Barry Long used to say that, no matter what happens in this world, whatever cataclysm comes or whatever transpires, the children will still laugh and play and the birds will say, still fly and sing their beautiful songs because that is nature, that is the way. And the, the sounds of nature today were so glorious as the beautiful birds were singing at the top of their voices and flying freely through the air. The Blue Jays came to me, many of the Wing Nations, transmitting their beautiful song, their beautiful symphonies. And it's very uplifting to the heart center. So if you can, take time in your days, if you can, to get out to nature and meditate with Pachamama, 
Mother Nature, Mother Earth, the Divine Feminine, amongst the trees and the marshes and the fields, the golden fields. So thank you for joining me today, beloved beings of light. Let us know in the comments below what you're seeing, what you're feeling, what you're experiencing, your visions, your visions for New Earth, your dreams. Last night was a, another night of intense dreaming. A lot of energies coming through, very vivid dreams, some intense energies releasing, activating for myself and for others. So if you're new to this channel, be sure to subscribe. Click the subscribe button below this video and the little bell next to subscribe for notifications on future uploads. And I'm also letting people know because people have been asking about uh, transcribing these daily transmissions and the transmissions that I read are archived on my website primedisclosure.com and below every video in the description is a link you'll see it starts with primedisclosure.com forward slash and whatever that article is titled you can just click on that link and it'll take you to the transcriptions and the source from where we received each one of these daily transmissions Thank you for joining me today and connecting and for shining your light brightly into the night. I love you all. Namaste.